that, that that's a question. Yeah. How do how do you guys feel about uh genres that we participate in and enjoy most of the time, like fantasy and sci-fi? How do you guys feel about love stories in those genres? Like it's not usually the focus, but it will sometimes so, show up. My instinctual reaction to that is no, get it out. I hate love like love stories, but it's like it usually gets tied into stories and it it enhances the story. So it's it's a it's more about a balance of having that love story in there and if it's the correct story. Like some stories should not be in there. Right. Well it's like it's also how much focus are they gonna put you know, into that as well. Like well, in the Harry Potter course. books, I think it's okay because it's like it's never the main focus of the story. And no. plus they're like it's teenager love story. It's different from well, it does it does story. enhance, right? So like a- Avatar the Last Airbender, the 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 love story in that uh, very much enhanced the story because a big part of Aang's journey was in order to master the Avatar state, he had to let go of all of his um, what's it called? You must uh, let go of your earthly attachments. Earthly attachments. So that meant he had to let go of the person that he loved, which was made a, a love story yeah very interesting then you take yeah. Korra <laughs> and, and the love stories in there contribute nothing and they're just annoying she might as well have just grabbed the entire crew and said line up the order doesn't matter I'll get to all of you eventually just, every time yeah every time there was anything but to do with a relationship in there it was really annoying and it it, it actually contributed very negatively to like her as a character it just I was like get it out get it out if it's not contributing like, to the theme or story get yeah. it out well like it, it would have been like say like all the weird relationship drama had just been season one and that was it Mm-hmm. We would have been like, oh, well, that was kind of dumb, but I'm, I'm, at least it's over. Unfortunately. Yeah. So I've been rewatching it. It wasn't <laughs> over. I've been rewatching it so I can, you know, if we have, if we do debate it again. Um, I need to rewatch it too. So I'm on season three uh, again. The best, it's, the, easily the best season of Korra, not even close. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. Season two was just absolute trash. Season one was okay. Um, there was definitely I, some. I, I like season it, but... one. Season two has a lot of problems. See, season, oh, well, well, <laughs> just, season, the whole season two is, is a problem. Yeah, <laughs> but no. But what I've noticed, the overall biggest problem with the core thing was just the complete change of the power system. I, it, it's completely different. Mm. In 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 Last Airbender, it's a skill you have to train. In in uh, core, it is hereditary you are a good bender because you are you know relative a good bender your well, the specialty ability, the ability to bend is hereditary the I could, uh, season one the, good till the end yeah yeah like the ability to no. bend is like how in good season, you are in, bending in, that in comes era. down to skill no yeah. no it it is it is it is hereditary uh your i agree that's the rules in last era bender if you can metal bend it's like uh depending on who your parents are. Um, specifically, the lava bending, because uh, Bo, whatever his name is, um, his fa- his uh, mother was a firebender, and dad was an earthbender, so he got, that's why he has lava bending. Also, the lightning bending, the dude, Mako goes to a factory <laughs> with a bunch of other lightning benders. I, I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? Like well, it, it, it's the shit. case like where people can do it now, but that doesn't mean they're all masters of it. No, I okay, wait, 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 no, wait, no, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. I'm no, no, no. We will save it. We will we will fight this out. We will get a whole group of us together. It'll be Royce and I and yeah, then, we like, get in there. <laughs> oh dude, it's good. <laughs> and Bolin, that's that he's the best. he is one of my favorite characters that hey, was original from Korra. He's sidelined. He's, he's fun, cool. and he does, and he's quirky, he and he he's a good dude, which is better than I can say for some of the other characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but man, gracious. oh man, has problems. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about before? Oh, love stories. Uh, so I'll mention. I'm going to plug my, even though it's, it's kind of probably far from release. Uh, my story. I I ended up putting a love story into that. Um, not my sci-fi. I have no love story in that. Um in my fantasy one because a big theme of my story is sloth 
uh, and not oh, being like that, lazy. That's, that's seven deadly. That's sin. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I feel like that's one that's not used very often. And not, I, I like to be it, a little it, well, different. I, I well, do have a theory as to why it's not used very often, but I'd love well, to hear why you used it. Because people only really look at sloth as being lazy when a big aspect of sloth is, uh, was it indecision or something like that? Like, not not indi- be- indec- indecisive. Yeah. Yeah. Indecisive. Yeah. Like not making a decision when you should. Um, and so that's kind of what I attributed to my main character in this story is that he has a problem, uh, you know, busting a move. Right. When it comes to like things in his life. Now, there's also this thing where everybody calls him lazy, uh, but that's not really true. He's not lazy. He is has a uh, trouble making decisions. Now there's He's this indecisive girl, and he, he mm-hmm. likes, he needs to think things through kind of character. Oh, you know, he thinks it through like way too hard. I have one chapter yeah, because the, the characters of the flower shop girl, it's a really hot, like girl that he's like, Oh my God, I I'm really into it. Right. And so this, this That's whole chapter, hot mama. Anyway. <laughs> so there's a whole chapter. Basically uh, it's uh, something about, uh, you know, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so mm. he's troubleshooting an issue because in this, he, he fixes magical tools. So it, somebody designed something new and it's now worse. So he's fixing that. At the same time, he keeps on going around the office trying to ask all the people being like, hey, what's the best way to ask this girl out? Like, I got to I got to come Instead up with that of just way. shooting his shot. Yeah, right. And somebody even says, like, dude, just go up and just ask her. And he's like, no, no, no. I got to make sure no isn't an option. And so I'm, he sure, goes I'm, and sure, I'm sure you had guys in the military who started out that way and either had it beat out of them or they quit. A hundred percent. It's one of the best things is watching somebody come out of the shell in the military because it's it's a very common thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, the uh, so eventually, like he does ask her in the way they came up with. Um, all right, AC. And if you, in case you don't come back, he's a little busy. So, <laughs> because the implications show up, you know. um, so because he asks her out the way he thinks is foolproof, she doesn't even understand that she, he's asking him her out, and she just thinks that he's offering to help. And she's like, "Oh, sure." And so, then the next chapter, he has to go on this crazy quest because he couldn't just ask her out. <laughs> Now, go a really roundabout so wait, way. he has his own like uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world kind of thing that he has to do. Uh, I, I think well, what's the exact reference uh, from Scott Pilgrim? Oh, like, oh, it, getting the girl is no longer just a simple thing. Like he has to complete a task or do something yeah. uh, somewhat yeah. outrageous. Well, he has, to, he has to do this very dangerous job to get this like uh, this plant, this magical plant because he basically offered to do it thinking that he'd be going on a date and then she's just, Oh, Oh, you're offering. Yeah, here you go. Do this. And he's like, no idea what he's getting into. It's a really dangerous plant. He, it was not properly uh, discussed the level of difficulty that would be yeah. associated with this task. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, he just wanted a, to make sure yeah. that she couldn't say no. And, but like she didn't say no, but she also didn't understand that she, he was asking her out and now he's on a, uh, He's doing a random task that could potentially kill him. I have, I have an, I have something that I was thinking about, like on the topic of love and stories in general. Mm-hmm. I think it's harder to put do romance in books than it is in a movie or a TV show, because Shoot. there's a lot you can imply in that kind of relationship or like the, I, like that potential relationship. Mm-hmm. With acting and with uh, more visual cues, it's harder to put that into a the written word i think yeah. without it getting bogged down into that kind of thing what do you think i mean it's probably with anything right like having a visual representation as a tool facial expressions that makes it easier uh i mean just uh, yeah i think showing relationships in general too, even friendships it's it you know you're trying to draw a picture with words and that's a challenge um yeah, I think yeah. probably relationships is one of the most difficult things to kind of come off naturally to. 
Like, let, let's look at one uh, an example I think works. Uh, Navani and Dalinar from Stormlight. It's not the yeah. focus of the story, but it's something. It's it's a it's a B plot for his character specifically and her character. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's overdone. I don't think it was too heavy a hand. It was something pertinent. It was something that built character and added character depth for both of them. And it helped them yeah. grow going forward in the story. So in a book like that, that, I don't mind it. A book like Wheel of Time... I'm not a wheel timer. Um, I read the first book and a half. It does It does get pretty good. But That's it what I hear. It's like, it's I, everybody says the third book is like where it starts to get good. I'm like, yeah, but... Yeah, I, I mean, there was aspects book one of and book two. Yeah, well, there was aspects of Wheel of Time in the first book that I I really liked. Um, I thought the them like falling asleep and being taunted in their their dreams was awesome. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I, I I love like spiritual warfare yeah. stuff put into books yeah. properly. Honestly, yeah. somehow but, missing from the damn show. We're we're just just ignore the show. It's dangerous territory. It's I I I I'm going story. through it for the first time right now. I'm what I'm. I've read three books. Oh yeah, no. There's there's yeah. one clever thing that he did that pissed me off because I I didn't figure it out. I didn't put it together for like a week. It's like oh the sword of Kalendor. They've been talking about it for a while. It's like it's a sword that Randall Thor must wield, and it's like oh wow that's really cool. It's a, just another magical sword thing. But it, like they're yeah. really hyping it up. It makes sense. And it's like where is it? Oh, it's in it's in Tyr. It's like cool. What yeah. where is Tyr? In a castle. What's the castle called? <laughs> the stone. It's the sword in the stone. Uh. <laughs> F. <laughs> <laughs> two on the nose um animation overload load yes uh by he said by that logic it would translate more easily to comic format yeah yeah it's it's another tool that you don't have in in books uh and again that, that goes into my like digestibility di digestibility topic about how like to say i couldn't talk to i was four man <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I have, I have, li I have I know. problems and all that. I but yeah, I know. But that's that's the lore behind the short bus, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fantastic, though, man. But, uh, yeah, no, a a book yeah. a book that isn't a romance book that has good romance is a little bit of a rarity. I so I, yeah. I don't know. Well, that's hopefully, I, I break that. I, I I'd, I'd yeah. love to I'd love to see you do it because it's a it's. <laughs> Sounds more like a skip. <laughs> she is sassy, bro. Yeah, she's sassy yeah. as F. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's it called? Uh, it made me lose my train of thought. Damn it. No. Um, yeah, no. Like I said, it's... Oh, he's back. I, I do agree, though. It, I Generally speaking, love stories, they don't help the story. And I'm like, get it the hell out of there. Um. Is he back? I guess... I guess it depends too, because sometimes you have stories that use a setting, but it's not a traditional story from that. Like, um, oh, The Princess Bride. That is not mm -hmm. a fantasy story with a romance. That is a romance story that's just using a fantasy, fantasy elements and settings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of the way. I don't know. It's it. Yeah. I keep on every now and again, I dip into the romance genre, and it's mostly bad. <laughs> like I really enjoy Outlander, but it like a lot of it's just not very good. It, I think it's because most romance books are written for women specifically. That's not a knock on women, but men and women, I think, want I just, different uh, things. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If, uh, yeah, well, I guess yes and no. I don't know. Um, you Careful, your wife's you here. <laughs> <laughs> we we agree on a lot of this stuff. Um, but Yu Yu Hakusho, are you familiar with it? I haven't seen it. I am aware of it. I'm, I'm a little. I, I know enough some about it. Yeah. You 100 percent need to watch it when you can. I've I've been told. Especially, that. I've been told it is my favorite um, shonen anime. He's I mean he's the same guy who did Hunter Hunter right before he did that before and uh, so the thing is is like when you look into that why is that show so good? It's because you got these four main characters and the relationship between those characters are so damn strong and you're like man how did this writer write these relationships so well well he wrote romance before he did this yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho was his first action one and he learned how to write relationships 
from doing it, romance it's, first. It's funny when a manga cut switches genres. Like the guy mm-hmm. who did, you know, Haikyuu, the show or the manga. It's a, no. it's a, it's a sports anime about oh, okay. boys, like high school boys volleyball. One of my favorite what? shows. I really, really enjoy that show. Well, yeah. I think it has some brilliant storytelling. But the uh, the manga cut was a horror manga cut first. So every now and again, they'll have a they'll have a frame. I'm like, those are not. What, showman oh, yeah. faces those are horror faces well was the, isn't the basketball one done by uh, uh what's there's the really... slam dunk and there's curie curie no basket i think and it's slam dunk but i uh, the one it's done by uh vagabond or yeah of... yeah no that that that's <laughs> slam dunk same guy yeah yeah, yeah. very it's very crazy. like slam dunk is a very very popular manga i have not touched yeah. it yet um yeah but yeah, no, like, like the, that's the thing too. Like, if we're talking about anime, like sports anime, you had like the, you're spoiled. You can either have one where it's like they have superpowers basically, or ones that are just a little more grounded. Like Q is more of that, and then yeah. you have like uh, um, what, uh, Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime in one of the longest running manga of all time, Mo- even mm. longer than like One Piece. It, it's insane. It's very very good. Yeah. I typically keep all my entertainment as something to do with magical powers. Oh, see, Baz brings up your wife brings up a good point. Outlander loses it yeah. m- loses me when it tr- when it tried to have you believe that every man she comes across tries yeah. to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like it's more noticeable in the earlier books, and it does manslander every now and then. yeah, a little bit. It, it yeah, I mean that's just kind of. Comment. I don't know if Outlander is written by a woman too, but I mean, it, it, it's it kind is. of the problem we're running with the mainstream is is uh, it's not that there's strong females necessarily. I mean, it's, they're strong females with zero personality or character, but it, it's the manslander. It's they, they're taking taking down men to bring women up, and that's I I I do lame. think I think with her specifically, I don't think she hates men. Yeah. She doesn't write men in a way that makes me believe that. I think I think what it is is that she wanted to, she needed to have co- she needs to have conflict, and because she knows that women generally don't fight in war, the conflict had to be yeah. of a different nature. So, like, yeah. it it's your your life and your and what is most precious to you, like your sexual choice and freedom, so to say, and safety as a woman in that time period is probably going to be one of the most hard to protect things. And that's an interesting point. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I haven't really formulated all my thoughts on it, but that's just my impression. I enjoy the show and I do like the books, but the books, the books are very good, but they are thick. They take, they kind of drain me mentally thick when I read boy. them. Thick. Damn yeah. boy, she's thick. <laughs> Wait, it's not working. <laughs> Karaoke. Damn, boy, you're thick. <laughs> Damn, girl, really thick. Music, can you hear that? <laughs> uh, yeah, People no, I, 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 that is an interesting point, though. If it does have to, um, I mean, because it, it men fight war uh, historically, and every single nation, damn near, it's always men. So, yeah, I would see that was a writing problem to. You'd run into a different problem just trying to have a woman in the military because then you kind of have to like explain why that is. Yeah, it's like she she has physical conflict with people sometimes, but it like she doesn't write women as these superheroes, which is a nice change of pace from the modern day, at least in yeah, this yeah. style of stories. Yeah. You just watched a clip from our show, Sailing the Iron Seas. Check it out live every Tuesday at 9:30 Eastern. It's on multiple channels, so follow my Twitter, at Batsauce, to make sure you know where it is to see it live.